Hey everybody and coming at you. Hey everybody and coming at you live. Hey everybody and coming at. You. Hey everybody and coming at you live from inside my living room. My name's Laura and this is my show. So hey everybody, my name's Laura. This is live with Laura, the booktube edition, and this is Mocha. Okay, thank you. As you can see, I'm back for another edition of my booktube. It's been about two years since I posted anything about my books. Uh, as you can see, I cut my hair again. I lost the light part of my hair because that was the sun in part that I like sprayed and like overdid myself in my hair. I am two years older, but I still love books. Uh, my book topic is a surprisingly good read. And by that, I don't mean that, I don't mean that I was surprised that the book was good. I mean that I was surprised that I liked it. It really is true that there's just books that are good and there's books that are just not as great, you know? I mean, I just love to read, so, you know, obviously in my life, but it's been two whole years. So in two years, I have collected more books. Oops. And I have also read a lot more books. I've expanded my genre choices. Uh, I don't just read young adult fiction anymore. Uh, I've slowly started to dip into regular adult fiction, reading some Gillian Flynn and, um, Kate White, who writes the best mysteries ever. But yeah, so I've expanded my books, so I'll definitely, I'm gonna try to do this a little bit more often, but I'm definitely going to be talking more about books, and hopefully I just continue my booktube. <coughs> oh. So, without further ado, today's video, as I mentioned, is a book that was a surprisingly good read. I think we're backwards in the thing, right? Whatever. But this is... This book is called The Last Boy and Girl in the World by Siobhan, Siobhan? Okay, I'm really bad at pronouncing her name, but I think it's Sio, Sio, Siobhan, Siobhan, Vivian, Siobhan? God, I suck. Okay, but yeah, you can. So here's the name because I obviously do not know how to pronounce it. I am a loser like that. And I guess the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because like, I just loved it so freaking much. Okay, I mean like I've loved other books since I read this one, but I just can't remember just like feeling so much out of a book, out of like a romance book, okay? But whenever I was younger and I used to read books that had like romance in it, I would get butterflies in my stomach whenever the girls would be all like, ew, you know what I mean? And uh, I would get like, oh my gosh, like, you know, when something interesting would happen. And I was just always really emotionally invested in the books. I don't know, it was just because I got a little bit older, so I was a lot older than the characters I was reading about. Or I got to the point where I was the same age as the characters that I was reading about. And so I guess that's a little bit different because in an ideal world, I would have been kind of going through the same things. And I guess reading the books and actually living in real life as a teenager is just completely different because I never felt the butterflies like about anybody. I guess I never really felt the way all the girls in the books did. So it just became a lot like unrealistic to me. I would still read great books and obviously fiction is fiction. It started to be like, okay, boys are not like this in real life. They're just not, okay? In this book, I don't know. I guess I really, 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 sorry, I just said really a lot of times, but I felt like I really, oh my God. <laughs> I felt like I, um, what's the word? I lost the word. I felt like I related to the main character a lot for some reason, even though I read it as a 23 year old and she's like, what, 17 or something in here. So Siobhan Vivian, I have read some of her books before. She wrote this book called The List. I think I read it whenever I was about 14. Uh, and she also co-wrote a book uh, or books with Jenny Han, who was the author of To All the Boys I Loved Before. You may have seen it on Netflix. And she also wrote the Summer I Turned Pretty uh, trilogy, which I loved. But they also wrote uh, the Burn for Burn trilogy. Whenever I read the list, I feel like in the nicest way possible, I just uh, felt like the list was like a really good book, but it wasn't in my like standout list whenever I was like 14, right? So I had like a standout list of the books that I like loved and the books that really like spoke to me. And I guess the list, I just didn't feel myself relating to the list, but I guess just because there was so many different, I think there was a lot of different character point of views if I remember it correctly. In this book, there's only one character point of view. I follow Siobhan Vivian on Twitter. So I had been kind of following her um, and I knew that whenever I came out and everything, and it was just like this big old thing. I 
was like, you know what, I'm eventually gonna have to read that, but I never did, right? I ended up going to the Half Price Bookstore one day. I'm sorry, that's where I get most of my books, okay? I picked up this one and I was like, you know what, I've been wanting to read it and I have Sio Bon Vivian books, so I'm just gonna buy it. So this took me about four hours to read and um, like, you know, that's a four hour movie as opposed to like a 45 minute show that was like a filler episode. So sometimes I just get annoyed at TV. So I was going through one of those little phases, aside from the fact that I just love to read, right? But I was going through a phase and I was like, okay, I'm going to read this book. But Hunter had actually, Hunter does not like to read at all. But Hunter had actually bought this book that he was kind of interested in reading. And we were actually sitting in a reading together. It was so cute. But anyways, enough of that. I guess since I feel like the list didn't stand out to me, I was just like, well, this one's gonna be good because Siobhan Vivian's good, but I just didn't expect for it to like stand out at all. When I read the back, it sounded like a, it almost sounded like some sort of like post-apocalyptic book because, so the back is uh, talk about, what if your town was sliding underwater and everyone was ordered to pack up and leave? So that makes it sound like, oh man, like the, I don't know, it just said town, but I still thought, man, the world is underwater and what are they gonna do? I love post-apocalyptic books, so if you've read, seen my other booktube uh, videos and you know that I love those kind of books, this specific book was not post-apocalyptic. So their whole town, they're basically going to flood the town out. It kind of like blend, I guess, with the reservoir and the town is just no longer going to exist. Well, everybody's like really upset about it at first. And this girl in particular, she, uh, her dad wants to fight back. And so she kind of wants to fight back too. They get into this sort of like mindset where they're like, well, this, these are the, our last days in this town. We need to treasure them, whatever. Um, she gets a little bit caught up in that and of course all the while she has her best friend she has the boy that she has a crush on and uh this other boy who is someone that she's kind of doing work with basically the main character is pretty hell and the whole town is pretty much hell bent on having or the kids mostly on having like the best like going out with the bang they're i mean that's exactly what it says in the back actually going out with the bang uh but they decided that they're just gonna do this and have all this fun before they have to like leave each other or you know forever so i don't want to give away too much about the book but it was really good i feel like i really connected with the character because i feel like she was a little bit distant and i think that that's actually how I am sometimes. So I sometimes feel like I don't connect with people um, the right way. And I feel like, and in a way that can be a bad thing, right? Because some people might feel like they can't connect with Keely. Um, possibly, I don't know. But maybe other people feel like this as well. I, don't, I have no idea. This is just of course all from my perspective, but I felt like I could, could really connect with the main character just because she had a hard time connecting with her people like she had her best friend she had the guy she liked but she was sort of in this limbo of like what she's supposed to do versus what she wants to do and like how she feels versus how she's supposed to feel that was sort of keely in this book a lot i feel like all the relationships that are written in this book are completely real you know her and her best friend have this real friendship and even though and the, then they get like it kind of gets a little bit strained and it's sort of like okay is this going to have a good ending is it not going to have a good ending and i feel like the way that she wrote it is just like really realistic i really felt like the whole push and pull of keely's um of Keely's feelings, like how she was just so like wanting to be on her friend's side, wanting to be on her dad's side, wanting to please her mom and wanting to please everybody, but also while trying to also kind of do what she wanted to do and kind of please herself. So that was something that was definitely like, you know, all the decisions that she makes, definitely some of them were this like stupid decisions. And those stupid decisions are exactly what we do as teenagers. So this book really captured, you know, everything. I cried in it probably like once or twice because that's how emotionally invested I was in it. Um, I haven't gotten emotionally invested in a book like this in so long, but Siobhan Vivian just really, she just did a really great job with the characters. She did a really great job with the storyline. Uh, it was a good length of a book, so it was mm, 415 pages. So it probably took me five hours. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like books are way too short and I don't get enough out of them, but this one was a good length. The whole story was there. When it finished, you didn't feel like you were missing any sort of pieces. So obviously when you like a book, you want it to continue regardless of like what the storyline is. Even though I definitely wanted it to continue, this book, I really felt like it was complete. Even though you're definitely, you definitely want to know what happened to Keely and how did she end up and blah, 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 blah. You're also really content with the ending. I don't know. 
it was a really good book to me and if you have not read The Last Boy and Girl in the World, it's been out for a while now, 2016. Yeah, I was a little bit late on it and I even tweeted like, how did I wait so long to read this? So if you're reading, if you're watching this and you like to read young adult fiction, you're particularly interested in a book about like friendship, I feel like one of the big focuses on this is Keely, so the main character. And um, even though it has the love story in it, I feel like that's very underlying. And it's it's a it's a book about a main character going through like issues with like and have with relationships and not just a boyfriend. And I think that's why I loved it so much because even though it what had that romantic element in it, uh, and it was kind of cute because of that, it had the that relationship with her mom, with her best friend, you know, the guy that one of her uh, guy friends. Um, and with her dad and we're just with like people okay so Ben vivian did a great job and i hope maybe one day she watches this video because that would be really cool and i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like young adult fiction and you're particularly interested in books about like i said friendship and a little bit of romance then i highly suggest the last boy and girl in the world um it is really good and I did not expect to connect with the characters that well. Uh, I hadn't connected with the book or with the character in like a long time. It had mostly just been like, I mean, obviously I read for fun, but like it had mostly just been like a book to read, entertainment, right? But I connected with this character. I loved Keely uh, and I love Siobhan Vivian. So read this if you have it. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed my video. So I'll see you next time on Live with Laura, the booktube edition.